we're back. It's been a few months. Wait, I'll take that back. It's been a lot more than a few months, but let's do another episode. We'll talk about what we've been doing since our last show and what else has been going on in the world. It's all next. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode, finally, of Modern Faith Unlimited. I'm your co-host, William Quinn. And I'm William Henley. William, I know it's been a few months. I know it's went through a long, hot summer. Went through a lot of stuff that's been going on in the world, in our lives, and in the world in general. So, have you been hanging in there? Yeah, um, I've had my highest electric bill ever this summer, so uh, I am now getting solar. <laughs> that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, I'm ready for the electric company to be paying me. <laughs> yeah, I got gotcha. you. That sounds good. Well, let's see, the last show we did was, uh, I think it was before the summer, correct? Oh, gosh, yeah. Um, I know... Uh, I did a show of my capstone project, but have we done a show since then? I think the last show you and I did together was before that. Yeah, it was. Uh, Basically, let me just tell you what what was going on. It's just basically something called life. You know, life got in the way, and uh, we just had things to do. And, you know, I mean, like we said before in an earlier video, this is not... A job for us. This is pretty much a hobby for us. And when jobs and life get in the way, we had to put this on the back burner. And unfortunately, that's what happened the past few months. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, updates for me. Uh, I have got my uh, MDiv uh, and I am now working on my doctorate, which is kind of mind blowing. I mean, there was like, I had a week. No, not even that. I had three days between the last class of my MDiv and my first class of my doctorate. So it's like it hasn't even processed yet. Um, And it's just, I just feel like I walked into another class that just happens to be the hardest class I've ever taken. Um, (laughs) But uh, then um, I did take vacation this summer. Uh, My mom and I went to Tennessee for a week. And then uh, went out to Arizona and got to see, uh, I got two nieces now, so I got to see both of them. We went up to Williams, hung out on Route 66. Um, I got to go see Meteor Crater, which, you know, I'm a science nerd, so Meteor Crater for me was really cool. Um, And then uh, my uh, book is about to come out. My book is with the publisher. That's good. So, Love it. Please let us know when that comes out because I would I am very interested in reading that, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm very I'm very keen to that. So I'm happy for you on that. Um I did get a bit nervous just last week. Um, because uh like I said, it's about to come out, it's about to be published. And my current professor head right now gave me the first critical criticism I ever had on my writing. And it was along this line of um oh my gosh, is everyone just being super nice or am I about to release something that's about to like sit, be a serious, you know, um, embarrassment. So uh, I gave my manuscript to multiple people and everyone's like, no, I'll just read it when your book comes out. And so I've had pretty much my editor read it and that's it. Well, that's good though, man. Uh, at least you're taking the necessary steps, precautions uh, as far as uh, getting that published, you know. I think that, um, you know, just want to make sure that everything is precise and, and detailed and to make sure nothing's nothing is not turned over and uh, nothing's not taken care of in the wrong way. And I, yeah, I commend you for that, uh, William. Um, let me tell you what's going on in my life. Pretty much um, had a lot of uh, stuff going on at home for me. Uh, I um, 
you know, just a lot of issues with my family. I won't go into many much details on. Um, I did get a new uh, position. I uh, actually start today. Uh, I'm now going to be a prayer partner with the Christian Broadcasting Network. And I'm really, really super excited about that. Um, after For those of y'all who don't know what uh, the Christian Broadcasting Network is, uh, CBN, that's Pat Robinson's network, uh, 700 Club um, is pretty much their biggest thing that they produce. And uh, the thing is, uh, this past Friday was the 60th anniversary to that day of the 700 Club, their first broadcast in 1961. Um, and uh, that day also, Pat Robinson announced his retirement from the 700 Club. Um, Basically, he's in good health still. Uh, it's, it's just basically just you know just time for him to uh, step down and let his son take over full time. Yeah. So, um, other than that, what have you uh, been up to? So, uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's okay. I got you, man. Uh, I'm just doing some reading, uh, trying to cancel some books. Um, Two books I'm mainly reading right now is um, a good friend of mine, um, friend's dad, uh, Lonnie Barnard, it, it did a book of his own, who I'd love to try to get on here. I've talked to him briefly about maybe doing my show. Uh, it's, it's like a, it's kind of a nonfiction book, but, but he based it into a fiction book type book. So it's kind of a, so basically it's like a true story written as like a fictional story. It's really interesting. So. Um, uh, really good book, and also I've been um, uh, still trying to get into um, um, Tom Lane's book, uh, Test and Approve. I'm trying to get that finished up, so hopefully, get him on the show too. Also, as for me, uh, I've finished reading um, the last uh, uh, book of Anne Rice's Vampire Chronicles just like last week, um, and uh. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Anne Rice's work. Uh, uh, I love her vampires and her witches novels and stuff. Um, I'm looking forward to getting started on some of her Christian um, uh, novels uh, because uh, about 15, 20 years ago, she converted to Christianity. Um, and, uh, well, I think she grew up Christian. She went away from the church and then she came back. Um, and... Uh, so I'm looking forward to starting on some of her Christian novels. Um, but uh, I really do not have um, a lot of time to read uh, for pleasure. Um, I mean, you remember what reading was like on the master's level, um, which I believe, um, like, uh, I believe per class was like 750 to 1500 uh, pages. Oh, yeah. I'll well, I'll even want to know would be the doctor probably like double that yeah it's at uh, 3500 pages a semester wow um i'm on my fourth book right now of this semester um and then uh i gotta write um for this what for my main class i've got to write uh well i'm writing a paper like every two to three weeks um and but then the term paper is ten thousand words um, and then, uh, then I got to write another paper for this class, which is about 1500 words. And then I have, um, a research class that Jennifer, the librarian is teaching. And, uh, I believe that's a 1500 word paper. Uh, and then this is on top of the dissertation, which, now, on the dissertation, the way TKU has it set up is you pretty much have classes for three years, and then your fourth year it, uh, you take for just writing your paper. Um, but ideally, you're supposed to be working on your paper the entire time. Mm. Thing is, is, I don't even have a subject right now. I think, I, I think that... In due time, you know, God will give you that in your brain that God is that say, he'll say, this is what I want you to work on. You're going to knock it out of the park. He knows where you're coming from, William. So, hey, man, I, I didn't even know you are going to start your doctorate um, on that. So, But the actual, I commend you on that, man. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So, um, I mean, I think I want to do something with the church in Europe. Um, what that's going to look like, uh, I don't know, um, especially right now with um, COVID and travel restrictions and um, uh, stuff like that. I mean, it's just absolutely crazy. Uh, I am planning right now on going back to Europe next summer, um, but it's just it's kind of hard to plan in advance because it seems like almost week from week uh, entry restrictions are being changed. Uh, like um, one of the big things is um, a lot of Europe now will let you in without quarantining if you can show that you got your COVID vaccination. I've been hearing that too. So uh, I, think, I think England too has been doing that also. Uh, that which is good. I mean, it's it's slowly but surely getting better, you know, by the mm -hmm. day. So uh, I hope you know, I hope they can get the ball rolling a little quicker on that, so more people can travel. You know, the, I miss good old days of traveling. Yeah, um, and you know how much of a blast it was. You know, I just hope that you know, you know, these restrictions can just start easing. Yeah, as as possible because I know people are itching to get it. Get out of the little bubble and start exploring the world again, which I hope happens, you know. Well, my thought is wearing a mask for 10 hours on an airplane. It's just like, ugh. Um, because, I mean, we live in Texas, and I don't think I've worn a mask uh, in probably, well, other than flying, um, I haven't worn a mask in probably a year. Mm -hmm. Oof. Yeah, I just I I have been wearing masks, but they got to be the most comfortable masks out there. I mean, I can't wear the one the the, the regular generic ones because they hurt my ears too much. I have to wear the really soft ones. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I mean they're I mean they're still restricted, but I mean yeah, they're easy on my ears. So that's just a pain in the rear, you know. When, when the problem is, is the really soft ones tend to be like uber hot. Yeah, that's true. And and, the, and the, on top of that, I had to wear glasses, and then, then you know all the oh yeah, the glasses. Them. That is annoying. That's yeah. I mean, the one thing I could do is like you know I have to wear it with a little you know under my nose, but they can't people get on me for that you know for wearing it under my nose, and I can't see if he's in there if it's over my nose. Right. Up, so. Um. I just can't. By the way, uh, I am vaccinated. Um, I know. Um, oh my, I'm good. I'm yeah, good. I'm vaccinated too. Um, I know a lot of Christians have issues with that, and I am like, okay, you know what? If you don't want to get vaccinated, fine, but uh, don't sit here and um, talk bad about the people who do get vaccinated, and vice versa. I mean, it's. Yeah. I, I say it, it's your choice, and I got mine because. One, because I travel a lot, and two, after the third time of going into quarantine, uh, after exposure, I, I was like, no, I'm not doing this again. I'm just going to go get that vaccinated. Yeah. yeah. Uh, have you thought about getting the booster? I've thought about it, um, and I don't know if they're even offering it yet, um, but um, I probably will probably would yeah i'd probably be uh, as i say on the safe side I, i'm definitely going to if when it does get offered mm -hmm. uh, you know because i do have i am type 2 diabetic mm -hmm. and um you know because my health issues i need all the protection i can mm -hmm. so, um as far as that goes um i have been imagining that um i've been i've been wa walking a lot now lately i've been doing like two and a half miles a day outside uh, nice. five, five days a week so I, I mean that's been helping me a lot and and it's easier when you have when you have a uh, headphones on with music on it's a lot easier you know i've learned that you don't you don't you don't breathe this heavy which is, which helps um you don't because you're not thinking about your you know your air intake you're just thinking about your music and that's been a big game changer for me on that i still get my my miles in and it works so I really haven't been 
doing much exercise. Uh, today, I actually um, went down to um, a park and walked a trail and stuff. And the thing is, it's almost like half a, uh, oh, probably not even that. It was probably about a quarter mile in and quarter mile out. Yeah. And it's like, I was hurting and huffing and puffing because it's like, I mean, it's like, it's like I work from home now. It's like a lot of days. It's like I may maybe walk fifty steps, you know. Um, but um, I have started a diet. Um, I've uh, lost uh, thirty-two pounds since April. Wow! There you go. Yeah, and my goal was to start exercising once I hit thirty pounds, and so. I think I'm going to hold myself to that because it's like, because of the weight loss, I'm actually feeling pretty good now. What I would, what I do basically, um, I just be going down, up and down my street like six times. I don't know if that's something you can do. That's an option. Get some good walk, running shoes or walking shoes and just do that like six times. Mm -hmm. uh, depend, uh, or, or more depending on the side, the uh, length of your street. Um, five times, up and back down my street is like two miles. So mm -hmm. I don't know how long it is where you are. I mean, that's just something to start out with. May start with maybe, depending on the length of the street, maybe four times, three times, four times, and just increase each each day afterward, you know? I think, well, a couple of the issues uh, that um, I have is uh, one, like with uh, walking. Um, so, uh, 20 years ago, uh, I did a study abroad program in Austria, mm -hmm. and um, I took a, a skiing class, uh, which was first and last time I ever went skiing, mm -hmm. and um, I kept complaining that, you know, the pressure on my feet was too high, and they're like, no, no, it's supposed to be a lot and stuff. Well, it was, the pressure uh, in the ski boots was actually so high, it actually broke my arches, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I have uh, flat feet now. And as such, any type of impact exercises, such as walking, running stuff, is pretty painful. Um, so, uh, uh, and the thing is, is it's like I used to love to like go hiking and um, uh, stuff like that. And um, uh, now it's just, I mean, I do have um, like these really, really expensive insoles. Uh, it, it's actually ridiculous. My shoes cost $20. My insoles cost $350. And uh, they help. But um, it's still, it's just, it's, it hurts to walk um, uh, long distances. I got you. So what, so what, what do you think about trying maybe cycling maybe, like stationary biking maybe, elliptical? Uh, yeah, I have an elliptical trainer uh, in my bedroom. Uh, so um, I actually bought it when I bought the house. And then moving it, um, I didn't realize how heavy that thing was. And I went to lift it like that far. Uh, like from, because where you see my house, the uh, back room is about that far from the kitchen. Uh, the height difference. And so I had to move it from the back room into the bedroom. And um, I completely misunderestimated uh, how heavy it was and spent three years with a chiropractor uh, from uh, lifting it on my own that that high. Oh, sorry about that, man. Um, yeah. So, uh, but my back is much better now. So, um, uh I've actually been seeing, um, this is going to sound crazy, but a masseuse, but my masseuse actually has a degree in sports medicine. And um, so he doesn't just do massages, he does stretching and everything else. And um, actually, last time I saw him, he actually popped two ribs back in place. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, he, it's like, man, I don't even need to see a chiropractor now. It's like my masseuse takes care yeah. of it. But, so, um, I've heard some of them do that, you know. Yeah. And so it's like, I'm better now. And it's like, I think I could probably do elliptical because um, be, because of the way the elliptical works, you're, you're not, you don't have impact. Right. And still full body too, because you remember yeah. your arms and your legs. So that, that is a great, I like the elliptical too. Um, mm -hmm. I when I was a um, uh, gym working out, I always use the elliptical instead of doing the, the uh, treadmill. Well, elliptical is fun. Mm -hmm. I definitely recommend that. If you, if it's low impact, doesn't hurt your knees. 
you know, especially your flat footed, you don't have to worry about that too. So yeah. So. So let's talk about uh, spiritually. What uh, besides what you're doing at school? What's uh, what you've been doing in spiritual matters? Oh gosh, man, that is the question. Um, so I'm uh, sorry I asked it. I didn't mean to ask. <laughs> I know it was just supposed to be um, a uh, shooting the breeze type of question, yeah. but it's man, good. my it's my spiritually also, you know, I got you. So. Yeah. Well, tell so, me, why you tell me, Let me just why you think about it. Let me tell you what's been going on with me, basically. Um, okay. Just a lot of soul searching, you know. Since and this, you know, since we're isolated right now because of COVID and everything, you know, I just been really praying to God. I just struggle, and just and sometimes I've been struggling too. You know what God wants me to do, and um, the last job I had before this one didn't really work out, and um, it was just a bad fit for me. And uh, I was been praying for a really good job, and um, the CBN job was actually the second time I applied for it. Uh, the first time I applied for it, I guess I just didn't have the um, the right time frame. And then a couple of months ago, just God said, "Try to apply again." Okay, I did. And I got farther than I did and eventually got the job. And I'm rip and I'll be honest with you. You know, I just thank God, you know, for you know, let me give me that persistence to do this again, you know, and try to apply for that again. And it worked. And I just think, you know, God has me here at CBN for a reason because he knows that I've been burned out with secular for so many years, but he knows I have experience in that. I just feel like it's just God's time that he wants me to use both my work experience and the degree I earned. So I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. That's just, I, mean, I can only thank God for that. So, so uh, with me, um, I know for the past couple of years, uh, God's kind of had this thing, uh, I guess, with me about um, what is it that you want from me? Um, I mean, uh, Almost kind of like, uh, I get, let me re rephrase that. If you remember God speaking to Solomon and saying that he was going to give him a gift of whatever he asked for, um, and Solomon asked for wisdom, I kind of had the same uh, uh, thing uh, happen. Um, and uh, it's like, uh, there, there's a lot of stuff where I've been like, uh, well, I have this. I don't really need this. I have that. Um, and so it's literally been one of these things that have been kind of put, putting up because it's like, I don't really know at the moment. Well, this past summer, it occurred to me that one of the biggest things I was missing was joy. Um, and uh, it's... I would have to say there's been moments where I've been happy, but um, a lot, I feel like a lot of uh, my life is kind of going kind of like in a down moment, going from one happy moment to another. And um, one of the things I, I've realized is uh, this is actually because um, uh, I feel like I don't have joy. Uh, and I, so this is something that just occurred to me probably within the past month. Um, and I said, God, I said, this is what I would like. I would like joy. Um, and, uh, it, it seems weird to think about the fact that not only am I a Christian, but I'm in ministry, but I like joy. And um, I, I do know uh, this past week uh, had Gateway Conference. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that was said, and I've kind of known this for a while, mm -hmm is that I will put my own spiritual life 
on the back burner to be able to help others. Yeah. Um, it's like it's almost like um, I, I think God, you and I have the rest of eternity to get to know each other better. Let me get these other people to you now. And part of the problem with this is that I'm finding myself constantly burning out and stuff like that because I'm not focusing on myself and on my personal spiritual life and stuff like that. Um, I do know one of the things uh, when I started my undergrad, I went to an undergrad at a Christian university and it's, Man, it's one of the most profound things uh, I think someone in seminary could hear. And yet, I'd have to say everyone in seminary fails at this point, is that you start mistaking your time learning about God with, uh, start, start substituting it for your time with God. And um, it's not the same thing. Reading um, your uh, Douglas Moo theology book, it's not the same thing as reading a psalm. Yeah. It's not the same thing um, learning, um, learning about uh, uh, first century Jewish traditions. It's not the same as spending time with God in prayer. Um, Sometimes we get the impression that it's so much, it's so much we have to read, it does, but even though, you know, it's that much, it still doesn't replace the actual word of God, you know, I mean, we can, I, mean I think just a few, just a few scriptures of that is just the same as the big amount of the book you're talking about, and, you know, that's why the word of God is so powerful, it, 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 it's, it transformed lives compared to what that other big book is reading. I mean, it's good for information, but the word of God transforms lives. That's the main difference. Yeah. A lot of people forget that, even especially, you know, especially Bible students in Bible college, you know. I mean, I can see if we read that all day, we're going to get worn out. If we read the word of God, we're going to be refreshed. That's just, that's just the natural born fact. Mm -hmm. I was just believers. We got to get into the word and read scripture and mm -hmm. meditate on it day and night. Now I'm going to throw something controversial out. Um, and it was actually, I've been kind of, this has been something that's been processing in my mind for a while. And then I read a book uh, here um, on my doctorate program. And it's like the, the guy pretty much uh, said what I've been processing. And so this is going to sound controversial to some. Quiet times are not for everyone. And so here's the thing is, is um, if the time you spend uh, uh, with God feels more like you're going to a doctor's appointment that you don't want to go to rather than spending time with a friend, then probably that uh, quiet time uh, is not yeah. what's, uh, but the thing is, uh, and here's the thing is, is if you're not doing a daily quiet time, you need to find something to, to take the place of that. Um, like I talk with God throughout the day. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I don't sit here and spend an hour with them first thing when I wake up. I talk with them throughout the day. Yeah. So um, almost like I would a friend. Um, and th this is um, an another thing is, is, you know, I kind of feel almost, and it's one of the chapters in my book is uh, one of the weird, one of the things I started doing, which has completely kind of shifted my perspective on a lot of things, is to stop taking my own requests and stuff to God, but start asking him, what's on your mind? Yeah. Um, and uh, now, of course, this also means you kind of need to know how to hear God. Um, a lot of, uh, and this is something, another thing that I'm talking about in the book is um, um, you cannot have a relationship with someone if you're having a one way monologue. Right. Um, you also do not have a relate. Let's put it this way if uh, someone, uh, got married 
But on their wedding day, they said, okay, you have all of these love letters that I've written to you over the past three, four, five years. You're good. I'm not going to talk with you again. What type of relationship would this be? Not a very good one. It's not a very loving one, not a very good one. Uh, yeah. Especially in a marriage relationship. I think it, especially in, especially the, uh, between God and man, it's two-way street. There's got to be active communication. If it's not yeah. there, it's going nowhere. So I and get exactly where you're coming from, William. Exactly. Yeah. And do you not remember why Christ died? Now, a lot of people will say, well, for sense. No, no, no. It's so much more than that. When man sinned in the garden, it, it severed the relationship between God and man. Jesus died to restore the relationship between man and God. Why would he sit here and say, great, revelation is done. The, uh, the Bible is done. You got my word. I'm not going to speak to you again. No, he, Jesus died to restore that relationship. And um, it just blows my mind that people think that God no longer speaks. Yeah. I, and trust me, I've seen some, I've been around people like that too, unfortunately. It's, it's not pretty. You know, yeah. God loved them. You know, mm -hmm. they're brothers and sisters of the Lord, but God loved them. They're hard to deal with when they believe that. I, I I, I can tell. I can say that from first experience. I won't go into further details on that, but I know that I know how that is. So, yeah, yeah. go ahead. I just think that um, you know, just the word and spirit can be done together. Let's not forget that. Picking back off what you just said, they work together. Let's just leave it at that. Don't try to make one bigger than the other. They're equally as good, and if used correctly together, they're equally as effective. I definitely, especially in the last 10, 15 years uh, since I've been at the church I'm at now, I really have been really meditating on how to hear the Word of God and how He speaks to me, not just through the Word, which is important, but in conjunction with the Word, the Spirit, speaking to us, you know, in any facet possible. It's possible when both are used together correctly. Mm -hmm. And let's just go ahead and um, wrap it up right now. Uh, I don't want to take, go too far into do this. It's just a catch-up show, basically. Uh, I've, William, great input tonight, by the way. Um, I know it's been a while since we did a show. Um, we're, even though I am working now, I've I, I really, I'm going to try to get really hard to work on bringing people on and uh, trying to get this uh, ball rolling back on this podcast and uh, YouTube show. Oh, um, quick update on a previous episode. Um, Evelyn's uh, uh, book, uh, Abortion, What's My Birth Control, is now out. I did hear about that. And that was a good episode. I really, it's very informative. Uh, she's still in uh, TKU. Or she she's working on her doctorate. Um, I'm not sure if she's at TKU. Um, I should ask her, but um, uh, I know she's working on her doctorate. And I know all the professors there. I was at the uh, alumni gathering um, a few weeks ago. Um, I just got the job at CBN that couple of days before that. And everybody, Dr. Hudson is there especially. He's really happy for me for getting that job because he's very familiar with CBN too. So, mm -hmm. And he's really, really happy for me. I, I think this is going to be a stepping stone to something really big. Mm -hmm. So, oh, by the way, my background, uh, this is uh, where uh, God's called me. Uh, I've been called, uh, this is Graz, Austria. This is where God's mm -hmm. called me to plant a church. I actually had a, I had, it's interesting I know about Graz is I used to have a John Coltrane CD uh, from a concert in Graz, Austria from 1962. I used to, in a two CD set I had. And it was a full concert from Graz, Austria. The sound quality is not great, but that's that's it's still a great CD. So that's how I know about Graz, Austria. Mm -hmm. so. so yeah, let's wrap it up. 
Well, let's wrap it up. Uh, William, uh, thank you for your time tonight. Um, glad we were able to catch up and um, uh, we'll make sure we'll, we'll get the ball rolling on future episodes. Um, you want to go and do the hours uh, of telling people where to find us on social media and uh, on YouTube? Yeah, uh, well, um, on Gosh, it's been so long since about that. Yeah. Uh, so um, on uh, Instagram, I believe we're, uh, yeah, we're Modern Faith Unlimited. Yeah. On Twitter, we're Modern Unlimited uh, it, because of character limits on Twitter. I and think we're, we're, we're Modern Faith Unlimited on, on Facebook also because, yeah. Also. But also think our, Facebook is the one I update the most. Yeah. And also ModernFaithUnlimited.com, our site. We haven't done a blog, uh, a written blog there in a while. I will work on that if something comes to mind. Uh, we are trying to get some people on uh, future episodes. I am working on that. I've talked to a few people uh, that I knew, um, and I don't know if you've been talking to anybody that you have any interest in uh, bringing on. Um, but we will let you guys know in, on future uh, episodes that uh, of people that coming on in the future. And uh, any final thoughts, William? Not at this time. How about you? Not me. I just, just want to say thank you for your pa- to everybody who's listening. Thank you very much for your patience. There is something called life. We just had to get through it, but we're back now. We're here. We're going to try to do whatever we can to get episodes out and try to get the ball rolling on this. So for uh, what Another time, thing is, I, I think I will make this as a closing thought. Um, I... Uh, think um i think one of the issues we had early on in the show is we were trying too hard with self-promotion um and trying to uh uh just grow the show and uh, stuff like that and um i mean i got a thousand dollars invested in lights video and audio equipment and like shortly after i got all that covid hit now um that being said, uh, uh, I mean, I get out, I'm around people. Uh, I'm sure you do. I'm sure we could probably actually be in the same room again. I mean, I, it wouldn't bother me at all. Uh, that being said, we live an hour apart, and I think um, doing Zoom is really convenient. <laughs> it is. I mean, I mean, the sound quality is pretty good still. Yeah. Um, but lighting. the point I'm trying to make is uh, I don't think we're going to be trying to push and promote the show as much anymore uh we're gonna we're gonna record when we record it's gonna be a ministry um that we're doing um and in fact one of the things we didn't do on this episode is we did not talk about our sponsor and here's the thing is is i think we made a whole seven dollars um over two and a half years uh uh, it's like we haven't even made enough to be able to cash out yet. Yeah. And so I'm like, I'm not going to interrupt y'all with doing a minute of a sponsor spot for pretty much no payout. We can still add to the beginning though, you know. <laughs> we, we yeah, I can I can still we can still add to the beginning, you know, before the before my intro. So you know, we can still do that. Well, we could. My my point is is yeah, uh, I get what you put. Yeah, I, I get it. It'd be, it's still seven dollars more than we had, you know. But like I said, we can't even cash out. It's I like know. you have to have fifteen dollars to cash out. I mean, what are we going to go like another two, three years before we get like fifteen bucks? It's all about God's patience, William. I yeah. Got you, okay. Well, that's our that's our show for today. Um, th- like I said again, thank you, for everybody, for listening. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for still being there with us. For William Quinn. Oh, and William Henley. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, and this my key. That's William Henley. I'm William Quinn. Thank you very much for listening to this additional Modern Faith Unlimited. We will see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.